The first of many Monkey D. Luffy Sugo Fest exclusive characters debuted on the 26th of November 2015. This was the first of many legends to release out of order compared to the Japanese release schedule as many players expected the Strong World line of characters to debut prior to the release of Log Luffy. This new batch brought along new outfits for some of the Straw Hat Pirates and as months progressed more and more of these characters found their way into the Rare Recruit pool. Unfortunately, due to unknown circumstances, on the 19th of May 2016, these dripped out Straw Hat characters were withdrawn from the Rare Recruit pool, only to return in November of that same year with their costumes slightly altered. This was the most powerful legend to release by this point in the game and continued to be for many months to come, supporting an immensely powerful rainbow captain effect that could host many viable crewmates to brute force content. Introducing Log Luffy. In this series, we'll be traveling back in time to experience some of the older Sugo Fest exclusive characters in their prime, aiming to show just what it was like to use these characters on their debut. I hope you enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's enter the Legends of OPTC. Alright guys, so we're here to talk about Log Luffy. We've made it to the fifth episode now of the... Legends of One Piece Treasure Cruise series. Now, if we go by the actual release schedule on Japan, Log Luffy was not the character that had released. If we actually, if I just take away these IDs real quick, uh, if we scroll all the way and we go ID less than 577, we can actually see that um, the Strong World characters were supposed to have released first. So you had the first, or well, actually, actually the second batch was uh, was with Ace, but then you had another batch which actually had uh, Strong World Shanks. These characters were supposed to arrive before Log Luffy on Global. However, they have done it a little bit differently, and it's it, we don't really know exactly to this day the reason why they did what they did. Um, we do believe that there was some licensing issues with the Strong World characters. We're not really 100% sure why they did it, but, you know, we had Log Luffy first on Global, and on release was by far and away the best legend in the game, and continued to be, like, the best overall legend for quite a long time. So for quite a few episodes, you know, heading into this series, we're going to be, you know, having a look at legends that probably weren't as powerful. I mean, we're, we're going to be getting to Strong World Ace very soon, and he is an immensely powerful unit, but we are going to be going by the global release scheduling which does mean that some of the characters do appear out of order than what they actually did on japan but let's have a look at log luffy okay log luffy for those of you who don't know this character was essentially a buffed version of the gear 3 rare recruit luffy that had released prior to um if you guys don't remember what that luffy was all about that luffy man he was he was probably the first official sugo fest exclusive to release this luffy right here was considered one of the best units in the game you know uh, 3.5 times attack after scoring three perfects in a row so despite half of your team not getting a boost getting a 3.5 times attack boost back in 2015 was absurd like this is better than like every legend that had released up until that point Rayleigh probably was the better rainbow captain after he released though because uh he was just a more stable unit like even after like one or two perfects the characters would start dealing pretty good damage and then what they did when log luffy released is they basically took the premise of this unit but they made him like basically scaled up to like a, an 11 like this unit was so much better right so let's have a breakdown of this luffy luffy his captain effect is very similar in the fact that you have to hit a certain chain of taps so he was a four times rainbow attack boost after you hit a good a great and then a perfect shout out to those guys by the way uh great captain effect obviously back in you know 2015 you think a oh, captain effect like this it's not that good but a four times captain effect back then legit was untouched nothing really came close close to this in terms of raw multipliers now you do have to remember that only half of your team gets this because he doesn't boost your attack at all before you hit that good great perfect so the good the great and the perfect hits have zero time or it's a one times boost basically so you're not really getting any damage off of that but the last four units hit ridiculously hard now because you are hitting a good a great and a perfect it means that your chain multiplier isn't increasing as much as it would if you were hitting six perfects for example which is why when chain locking units became more common uh, uh, it just made this unit even better because no matter what you're good great and perfect you're going to be hitting that max chain capacity meaning this four times multiplier was 
basically being abused to its fullest potential. Now, his special ability, unfortunately, isn't that great. Uh, even, to, I guess, back in those days, uh, his, his special was okay. Random, typeless damage to all enemies, but it also gave himself a guaranteed strength slot. So that was kind of nice. You know, no full board of orbs, no, like, fixed damage, no health cut. This is random damage between 70k and 200k. Uh, I guess back then, you know, if you're doing a 200k special or close enough to, that, that would be considered pretty good. When this released on global, we didn't have the, the, I can't remember which update, was it version 3, version 4? I can't remember, but there was a version update that eventually released sockets. When this guy got his sockets, uh, it definitely made him way better. He ended up getting 5 sockets with his limit break, uh, but he obviously had 4, 4 sockets. Most of the older legends actually had 4 sockets though. It wasn't until limit break where some of these characters would gain additional socket spots. But yeah, 17 turn cooldown, that's also a little bit of a hard thing for him to deal with. 17 turns is ridiculous, and Limit Break definitely helps with that, but, you know, we're talking about old school Log Luffy, he's not going to have Limit Break, 17 turn cooldown, it's a lot, and uh, a lot of these older legends did have very, very high cooldowns, which meant that you had to stall for a lot of your content, which wasn't great, but that's the breakdown of Log Luffy, let's go ahead and see what kind of content we're going to be playing today. Alright, so for the roulette wheel this week, we've gone ahead and changed it up a little bit. We have Clash Aokiji and Clash Doflamingo, keeping some of those really difficult raids at the time. But we've also got Urogue, Lucky Roo, and Rebecca as the first round of Colosseum units. Totsuki from the future here, just to let you guys know that actually all of these original Colosseum units and a lot of Colosseum units actually are not available in the archive so unfortunately some of those really older coliseums that i really wished i could show you guys in this series i literally can't show you them because they're just not in the archive at the moment so hopefully in the future they get added but for the moment we're gonna have to try and change things up in terms of the content that we're going to be taking on in this series uh, you know, I don't want to stray too too deep into the rare recruit batches to bring like, you know, later batches into when Log Luffy first released, though, you know, Log Luffy was good for a very long time, but I, I want to kind of stay a little bit, you know, closer to 2015, maybe stray a little bit into 2016 in terms of the characters that we use. We'll have to wait and see what we actually come up against, but I feel like these Colosseums, the first round, we should be able to beat with Log Luffy with characters that are relatively old, and I feel like Doflamingo should be easy to take on. Aokiji, while Luffy doesn't have type advantage we could run some pretty good psi units on those teams but let's go ahead and spin the wheel and see what we get we could potentially get our first coliseum this time around let's see what we get Ooh, clash aokiji okay all right i have a couple of ideas as to what i would want to run for this particular content i'm intrigued to see how we how we perform with this one all right let's go ahead into the team builder and see what we're able to do all right, so we are now back and uh, let's go ahead and get through this content. I think this is going to be a little bit tricky because it's been a long time since I've used Log Luffy for any content, but I'm excited to get into it. So this is the team that we're going to be working with today. Uh, we, now, unfortunately, as you guys just saw, you know, for Log Luffy, I actually don't have an unevolved copy I can just quickly evolve so that it has like no candies or anything. But uh, one thing to note is that with Clash Aokiji, um, having sockets was actually really useful for it. This was one of the first pieces of content where having bind and despair sockets was, I wouldn't say it was required, but if you had it, it made your life so much easier for this event. And for this particular team, we actually do have at least level one bind and despair. So that's going to be a really great addition to the team. But this is the team that we're running. Now we're running Clash Garp as well. He's a really good unit that can generate us Psy and recovery slots. And this is where Story Mode Mr. 2 comes into it, who changes recovery slots into Psy. So on the final boss stage, we're going to be getting our Psy characters guaranteed matching slots. This combination back in the day was very prevalent for Psy teams, Garp and Mr. 2 to generate those full board of slots for your team. We do have Impact Dial Usopp, who is another really good character back in 2015-2016, uh, being a, one of the first characters to be a 2 times attack booster. He's a 2 times attack boost to Psy characters. So having that on the team, as well as Doflamingo, Clash Doflamingo, for a 2 times orb boost, should give us the damage output that we should need against Clash Aokiji. We are using the Thousand Sunny as the ship here, and the only reason why I want to do that is because the original Merry Go ship currently on the, on the game uh, will make perfects easier to hit, so sometimes hitting good, great, perfect may be a little bit difficult. So that's the reason why we're running the Thousand Sunny, sunny ship, which is just a 1.5 times boosting ship. We're not going to use the special. We don't... Actually, will we need it? We might need it. Anyways, let's jump into the content. Let's go ahead and unlock... Clash Aokiji. 
And here it is. We have now unlocked Clash Aokiji. Uh, it looks like we're actually out of stamina. That's great. So we're going to have to refill our stamina real quick. As of me recording this video, the Ichiban Kuji stuff just came out. Um, but let's go ahead and use a Bandai friend captain for Log Luffy. Uh, this is going to be super interesting to see how this one plays out here. Um, obviously, no support effects. Support effects were not a thing for a very, very long time. So don't expect that to be uh, in this series anytime soon. But uh, I I'm so, so scared about this, but hey, let's get into it. Let's go ahead and use Log Luffy versus Clash Aokiji. Let's do it. All right. So um, actually, something that I just noticed as well is that this is the first piece of content in this series that we haven't used Golden Pound Usopp on the team. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. So of course, we need our special cooldowns to be ready to go. Um, so we don't really want to be take too much damage. I mean, we've only got like just under 16,000 HP. That is not a lot to work with. Um, so let's just take down the one turn cooldown guys and work from there. Let's do it. All right So remember good great and then perfect and then the rest of your characters for the rest of that turn will receive the four times attack bonus from log Luffy Let's do it the first good great perfect of the series good great perfect And we'll take down these two guys on a one turn cooldown so you may think you know that's very very annoying and very tedious and well i mean it is but you know one of the really good benefits of log luffy comparatively to like gear 3 luffy was obviously the multiplier was higher despite the fact that your chain multiplier wasn't as high as what gear 3 was but being able to hit good great perfect meant that you could actually recover whilst doing your attack chains which is where um you know this character just saw a lot more play and you know four times attack bonus as we said back in the day was was crazy crazy good all right let's continue it let's go Good. Great. Perfect. Take down this guy. We will, we will actually um, leave that recovery slot alone, and we will use that a little bit later on. Um, I'm thinking about passing the turn here, actually. I'm, on, I'm just going to go ahead and, like, skip the turn a little bit. See if we can get any more recovery slots to heal back, because I'm pretty sure these guys are going to hit pretty hard. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. Uh, we got two recovery slots, though. We could try and take down this penguin. I think I will, actually. Good, great. Oh, it doesn't really matter, actually. That's fine. Um, we'll keep that one strength slot, and it would be nice if we got another recovery slot here. That'd be really good. We did. That's pretty good. Let's do it again. Here we go. Good, great, perfect. Shout out to those guys, by the way. All right, let's move on to stage two. Cooldown's looking pretty good. I think that was a pretty, pretty awesome stage one. Stage two, um, we've got a bunch of mobs here. So are we, we actually need to kill three of them this turn. Otherwise, we're going to take a lot of damage. So we're going to have to focus in here. Let's do it. Here we go. Once again. Good. Great. Perfect. There we go. Looking pretty good. We should be able to get a lot of turns of stall off on the turtles and the lobsters here. So we actually... Uh, we should probably keep those recovery slots. Yeah, we're going to keep those recovery slots. Good. Great. Perfect. Um, and that's one of the good things about Log Luffy as well, is the fact that, you know, you're not getting your attack boost straight away, which means that stalling is actually pretty easy to do. We're going to take a lot of damage here, though, from the lobster and the turtle. We're getting to a stage where we probably don't need to stall anymore, um, which is good, but I definitely want to make sure that we can get some matching slots for the next room. Next room could be a little tricky. Getting some more beneficial slots for that stage would be really good, though we're not looking good right now, that's for sure. Let's go ahead and just pass the turn and hopefully get some matching slots. That's what we would like to see. Unfortunately, it is not going our favor right now. Uh, is he going to stay up? He should. Just. Just stayed alive there, that lobster. All right, what do we got? Uh, these not getting matching slots. Uh, is it going to matter? I don't know if it's actually going to matter. All right, let's just move on to the next stage. Um, because my Log Luffy is limit broken, he has so much cooldown reduction, I'm actually not going to use his special ability, though you know, having his special ability for this particular stage would be very, very good. So this is the stage, like, I think this was, like, one of the first pieces of content that introduced, like, heavy bind and despair. Or not really, it's not really heavy bind and despair, but, like, Aokiji had a lot of bind, uh, and despair is inflicted on this stage as well. So this is where sockets came to be very useful. And sockets back in the day were very difficult to get, or should I say unlock powers, as they're officially dubbed in the game. So, at this point here, we need to hit Good Great Perfect and kill, ideally, three of these guys. So, no screw-ups. Let's do it. Here we go. Good. Great. Perfect. These guys don't have a lot of HP. That was really good. So, we're going to take a bit of damage there, but that's fine. Uh, I think we're looking pretty good right now. Uh, we did get a recovery slot, which we will consume. Let's do that. Good. Great. Or oh, just... 
just got that great. So if we were running the uh, the current Merry Ghost ship, that would have been classified as a perfect. We would have screwed up our chain and hopefully would have had to try and salvage that one. So on this stage here, I believe these guys will bind characters that are super effective against them. But I think it's only one turn of bind. So the fact that we've got level 2 bind isn't going to be an issue for us. So that's ideally what we want. We definitely want to kill this, uh, this seahorse. Actually, does any of these guys have a 6 hit combo? Okay, Usopp does. That's actually perfect. Um, so ideally, we keep the blue guy alive. We keep the green guy alive. And that should be it. Alright, let, let, let's see how this one plays out. Here we go. Okay, we shouldn't have to worry about combo hits. Okay, I think we're looking good right now. I'm pretty sure both of these guys should bind. Yeah, bind Dex. That's perfect. And he gets rid of it. Okay. So that gives us basically like a free turn of stall there. We actually can technically take two free turns of stall. But, I mean, at this point, there's no real reason to. So we're just going to go ahead and move on to the next stage. We could just stall one turn as well to see if we can get some matching slot. That would also be good. We do get a matching slot on Garp. That's really nice. Um, because I, I, I believe, if I remember reading correctly... I think we get like a couple of turns to just do a little bit of damage towards our KG. So I think that's going to be really good. Um, so let's see, what does he do on his preemptive? So he has the immunity buff, so we can't do any debuffs to him. And yeah, it says like a three turn cooldown. I'm pretty sure he does stuff every turn, but um, we could just take a little bit of damage off him over the first couple turns and then burst him once he gets a little bit lower. Because, um, you know, our KG, he's just chilling. He's not doing anything, man. He's just chilling. He's waiting. Uh, so let's do good, great, perfect once again and hit last with our side characters. Though... The fact that Mr. 2 has a non-matching slot means I probably should attack with him. So let's do that. Here we go. Good. Great. Perfect. Do a bit of damage. Garp with a matching slot is pretty nice. So do you do anything? Ice Age. Okay, the bind gets rid of that. So we get another turn to basically just do that again. So let's do it. Here we go. Good. Great. Perfect. Nice. You know what? I, I feel pretty comfortable going for the burst turn right now. That's what I'm going to do. So, first of all, we're going to use the uh, Doflamingo special first. Now, you know, it doesn't really matter what order you do it in, but the fact that Garb is currently buffed and changed, where he actually does an orb boost, we're going to use Doflamingo first and then use Garp afterwards. That's, uh, that's our motive right now. Let's go ahead and use Garp now. So, Garp is going to uh, change our slots to Recovery or Psy. So, that's fine. But then we're going to use Mr. 2 to change the slots that were given by Garp, the recovery slots, into Psy slots. And then we can use the Usopp to give our Psy characters a 2 times attack boost. And then we can use the Log Luffy just to generate another matching slot, just because we can. And I mean, the Log Luffy animation, the Gum Gum Gatling, the Jet Gatling, should I say. And from here, we just have to hit Good Great Perfect and hit last with our Psy characters and hopefully get the dub. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Let's do it. Good, great, perfect. Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Log Luffy, man. Absolute homie. He got the job done. Lickety split. That was no problems whatsoever. See, when you go in with a game plan, I think, is that one of the first ones that we've cleared where I haven't died? I think, no, we almost died on the Boa Hancock episode, but... We wanted to go back and do it again, but that was actually the first time we did the content without actually dying. So that's, that's pretty dope. That was really, really effective. Got the job done. Absolutely no issues whatsoever. We're just going to sell everything. That's fine. But there we go, guys. That is Log Luffy taking on the uh, Clash Aokichi. That was a bunch of fun to go ahead and use Log Luffy once again. But that is going to wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys are enjoying this series. As for the next episode, the next episode should be V1 Shanks. Uh, V1 Shanks was actually the first legend that I ever pulled in One Piece Treasure Cruise. So I'm very excited to go back and see what he is all about. Uh, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode today. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below on that guys i will see you guys within the next video